Chapter 34, I Knew It. Wins Winslow nudged Louie's hand, flapping his lips over it, slobbering, reaching for a carrot. The way Louie's father was leaning against the side of the garage reminded Louie of Gus, the way he used to casually lean against things. Walls, doors, fences. For a moment, Louie was cheered, thinking of Gus like that. But in the next instant, he missed his brother more than ever. His parents looked worried. It's Winslow, his mother said. We've had a long talk with Uncle Pete, and he agrees that Winslow needs to go. I knew it, Nora whispered to Louie. I knew it was bad news. Louie clutched Winslow to him. Go away? Away from us? Louis's father rubbed his hand along Winslow's side. We've talked about this before, Louis. We're not allowed to keep farm animals this close to town. But Uncle Pete has farm animals close to town. Not this close. And that area is zoned as farmland. Besides, Uncle Pete says donkeys need to be with other animals, not alone. He's not alone, Louis said. He has me, us. Nora was holding on to Winslow's tail. Louis's mother said, he could go back to Uncle Pete's. Both Louis and Nora pounced at once. No. But why not? Nora crossed her arms defiantly. Tell them, Louis. Tell them why not. Louis also crossed his arms because he needs to be here. We need to protect him. Mac came around the side of the house, hand in hand with Claudine. Hi, everybody. What's up? Mac was swinging Claudine's hand back and forth, but he stopped when he saw the expressions on Louis and Nora's faces. What's the matter? Claudine placed her free hand against her lips. Oh, no. Is something wrong? Yes, something is wrong, Nora said. You get attached to something and it always gets taken away. I knew it. Chapter 35, do you miss us? That night, Louis lay in Gus's bed under the quilt that smelled like his brother. He wanted Gus to come home. He wanted to ask him things. Are you afraid? Are you hungry? Are you cold? Are you safe? Do you miss us? He wanted to tell Gus about Winslow, about how he loved Winslow with all his heart. He wanted to tell him that Winslow understood things and that Winslow loved him back. And that was funny and goofy and occasionally loud. And Louis could not imagine life without Winslow. Before Gus left for the army, Louis had not been able to imagine life without Gus. And then one day he was gone, leaving behind big empty spaces. He wondered about what Nora had said. You get attached to something and it always gets taken away. Something else was bothering him too. Who did Winslow belong to? To Louis or to Uncle Pete? Chapter 36, he's not a dog. The warmer weather brought out more walkers and joggers. If Winslow was in sight, they would stop and gaze at the donkey. Aww, it's, it's a donkey cutest thing ever. Winslow responded by braying a variety of loud, ridiculous, squawking, honking, shrieking sounds, and then Mrs. Tooley would call out, shut up, which would only make Winslow bray louder and more intent, in insistently. One day, when Louie and his father were in the yard, an animal control officer arrived. The officer did not get out of his car. Instead, he lowered the window. He did not smile. 
Is it true you have a donkey on the premises? Is that it out back? Complaints have been made. This neighborhood is not zoned for farm animals. The officer handed Louis's father a pamphlet outlining animal control regulations and a notice to remove the animal within seven days. Don't you even want to see Winslow? Louis asked. Winslow? The donkey. He's very friendly. I can see him from here. Eeyaw, eeyaw. I can hear him too. He's not even as big as some dogs. But he's not a dog, Louis's father said. We're working on it. The officer interrupted. You need to remove the animal within seven days. Is that clear? He did not wait for an answer.